So continuing on with our forge press build. I spared you guys a lot of the grinding footage and stuff like that. Uh, this takes a long time, so the videos are kind of slow on this project, but I'd rather bring you a little bit more than just me sitting here grinding and rather show you actual progress. So what we have, I've notched this top out on both sides here, 45 degree angle, carried it out, and then we're going to have a flat piece there to mate to it uh, all in one piece. So I had to do a little bit of a template on there, and I'm going to try to make this thing line up halfway decent, make it look halfway decent. Um, so think of it like this thing, uh, like this. So this thing is going to be, this H-frame is going to be a 37 ton press, 74,000 pounds of pressure. Chances of me using all 74,000 pounds of pressure to move metal, probably going to be pretty slim. So it may never see that type of pressure against it, but better safe than sorry if I'm going to weld this up. Now I'm using 7018 rod. So that's only 70,000 pounds of strength there, but there's so much of it on there, I'm really not too worried about it. It's something that we're just gonna have to watch closely. But um, we're only gonna come down to about here with this top piece, and that's gonna leave us quite a bit in the middle. I'm not fabbing up the rest of this middle yet until I have my rams. Once I have my rams, then we can really, we can get moving big on the fabrication. Next step after this piece goes in, I could start getting the C-frame portion of this fabbed up and things like that, and I do have a ram for that. Now, whatever hydraulic valve I get, the two detents on it, they're going to have to each have their own pressure bypass on it because that ram I have over there is only a 2500 PSI ram. The two 4-inch rams that are going to run the H-frame section of this, they're 3000 PSI rams. That's how we're going to be able to generate that kind of tonnage for the press. I said I'm probably not going to need that much power with what I'm doing, but I'd rather have too much than not enough. I'd hate to build something like this and just have it underpowered. So anyway, we're going to do a bunch of grinding, a lot of tracing and stuff like that. I will throw you guys in the time lapse for the next bit and I will see you on the other side of it.
let's stand Bertha up here. Tell you what, this thing's getting a little heavier with every piece of steel. Fortunately, hopefully, we don't have to do too much. Hopefully, we don't have to worry about doing too many more uh, tips and all that good stuff. But as I get some weight on the bottom of this thing, it'll make it. It'll actually be pretty easy to do this with still. All right, come on, hernia. There we go. You guys can't expect me to do a discussion without my coffee. Gotta have our coffee. I guess I'll flip the camera screen so I can see what the hell I'm looking at. Okay, good deal. All right, so where we are at. I've got some two inch square stock of stabilizers. What a difference, just stabilizing that web. I had to take ratchet straps, hook it around the top, then hook it to the bottom, and draw this thing up with the uh, with these legs right here level, because that 12 inch I-beam actually developed a little bit of a set to it, just from all this weight being on it with no support. Probably in retrospect, I should have done that first, and I'll show you what I did to get those angles right. So I had somebody mentioned cardboard, uh, I believe it was Mark, regular viewer, and I like to use, I've got a lot of this kicking around, these little scraps, and they're actually perfect for tracing out, making templates. You can cut them, it's usually a throwaway for me. If it was something I had to keep, I'd probably make it out of plate steel or something like that. But this is perfect for those quick and nasty, you gotta trace it out, get everything right, and it worked out nice for that. So I actually cut these with the porta band they fit right in there, they welded nice, happy with that, and like I said, it really, it made this solid. So I'm hoping tomorrow, my hydraulic, my cylinders for the H-frame portion of this are due here hopefully tomorrow, and they better get here tomorrow. I've gotten the go-ahead from the boss lady to do whatever I have to do to get this thing done so I can get it using and get cranking out tools. The words I've been waiting for my whole life. So I figure, now, I, I do know the center-to-center -center measurements on the rams from when it's fully closed, and I think they're uh, 24 and a half inches, maybe somewhere in there, maybe 21 and a half. I can't remember exactly without looking it up. I know this isn't, this is too tall right now as it is, but what we're going to be doing here, we'll get more plate steel in here, but we're going to have to stiffen this whole, this whole thing up. Now the webbing on these uh, on this plate on these uh, I beams, it's only three eighths plate for the webbing, so I'm definitely going to have to stiffen this up. Now, I had people mention stiffening from here all the way down underneath this anvil plate or whatever you want to call it. I actually have that on the back side. It goes all the way down to the bottom. You guys could see that when it was flipped over, and that was actually just the bottom of one of these I beams cut off and it had a big piece of half inch plate steel already welded onto it. So we were able to, to make that pretty stiff. Now probably what I can do, I'll probably get some more two inch square tubing and run it from down here, down to this webbing here. And probably wouldn't be a bad idea to continue it down to the bottom. Now, the way a press works, it's not like a power hammer. I don't really need full contact with the floor underneath the center here. It's actually gonna, push both ways. So this square here, that's what's going to take all the racking force. That's what's going to take all the major force. So it's not only going to push against this, it's going to push against that and they're going to try to tear each apart from each other as you're using that, that press. So this, I want as much steel in here as I possibly can. That's why I cut this in the manner I did because I figured I could have cut that a little thinner, but I wanted to carry it down in here and get as much of a weld on these corners as I could have. I could have cut it square, but it would have been a shorter weld joint and I don't think it would have held up as well. So the angle, we actually have really long welds there on front and back. Now 7018 is a 70,000 pound tensile strength on it. So we're going to be kind of pushing the limits of the welds, but the uh, way I figure it, Chances of me actually using 37 tons of pressure pushing against this before I ruin the piece I'm working on, pretty damn slim. 
I just wanted, I'm building this a little more power than what I actually need for the things that I'm making. So up next, as we move along, we're going to start working on the C-frame portion of this thing. And we're going to start getting that fabbed up. I'm going to make that a little bit taller than this one because I plan on doing a little finer work on this stuff. And this being a C-frame, you can get all the way around it. You can get your pieces around it. And what will support that will be all the webbing that's in here. It will also support this outside along with this I-beam that, that comes across on the bottom. Um, I've been moving this around with the pallet jack the way it is keeping in mind just to keep the feet maybe about a half inch off the floor. With as wide a bottom as that half inch plate steel on the bottom of that I-beam is, it actually doesn't move at all. I'm really surprised. But it, uh, keeping it so narrowly off the floor, even if it did tip a little bit, this thing's going to hit the floor before it comes off. I thought about running, I gave some serious thought to running some uh, three by three angle iron to fit it exactly to the pallet jack. And I've nixed that idea because I want to put pedals, foot pedals to operate the hydraulics on this down towards the bottom. And if I want to, if I need to get closer to this thing, I don't want to be tripping. I really don't want to be tripping on three inch angle iron. This four inch channel is going to be, going to be bad enough to have it right here where it is, but I need a wide footprint on this so it doesn't just tip over. But um, I'm probably going to add some more two by two square into this webbing here, but I tell you what, it is amazing. Unreal how much that stiffened this thing up. I mean, I'm moving the whole thing rather than just this top whipping back and forth. So anyway, that's where we're at. We'll see whatever parts I have that arrive tomorrow. We'll dictate what the next video is gonna be on this build. As we get into the hydraulics portion of this, I'm going to go through the formulas I use to calcul calculate what I need where I found the information, and we'll line that all up there nicely so you guys can figure that stuff out yourself. It's just like with the, uh, the timber calculators I use to build this barn. They're, they're easy to find, but what I like to do when I'm looking for things like that, I want to see what the results are on three or four of them before I trust one. If I get three or four that match up really well, I usually go with it because it usually means it's pretty good information. Not always, but in my experience, that's what's worked for me. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this one. And one more thing to throw out there. If you guys like Tim, the Great Plains Craftsman, if you haven't seen Tim, check him out. He's an awesome guy. Or if you like Nathan from Out of the Woods, uh, he's got a sawmill channel, does very well. We are actually talking about doing a podcast, the three of us. Right now we're just in the beginning stages of lining up um, how we can do it logistically, record it and all that thing, where we can publish it. Um, we'll kind of see what develops, may even start another channel just for the podcast itself. So I will keep you guys up to date on that. It's probably going to be a few weeks away, but we're, we're really working towards that right now. But uh, anyway... Hope you guys enjoyed it, and I'll catch you on the next one.